Um, here's the China Update panel, and I'm going to let my panelists introduce themselves. My name is Renee Targus. If you just got here, I'm the editor for um, Ag Agribusiness Global, and I'm going to pass the microphone to David Lee first. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very glad to be here and to uh, have this kind of panel together with two gentlemen from China Agrochemical Industry. And uh, I'm the uh, contributor for Agribusiness Global. So I think you read a lot of articles from me, but uh, I think it's, uh, we, uh, we, we currently we have the final chance to meet each other. So I'm very glad to be here. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Kevin from Fuhua. So maybe many of you have already known us, but uh, Fuhua, we are one of the biggest supplier of uh, the biggest single active ingredient glyphosate. So we've been located in the southwest part of China. And it's my pleasure to be here. I'm the uh, uh, general manager of the crop protection division of Fuhua. Uh, glad to be here. Hi, everybody. My name is Jeff. I'm head of international corp dev and legal at Max Genotech. As part of that, I'm also CEO of our North and South American entities. Um, I'm very excited to be here on this panel with these two fine gentlemen, Kevin and David. And um, hopefully we have some fun. Definitely. All right. So um, I'm going to be asking questions, and I'm directing this first one to Kevin. Um, so how are you facing uh, the current competition because of oversupply? And more effect, like what's the scale effect in your research and development process? Well, that, that's a good question. I mean, we keep hearing, hearing the same question from uh, many of our customers, also in supply chain. I mean, oversupply, this kind of topic, we, it's not the first time that we see them. I mean, the first thing I, I think most important is to realize that and accept that. Um, because in the previous two cycles, we already see oversupply in, 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 in agrochemical industry, but also in other industry. I think uh, the key point, not only for our manufacturer, but also for the whole supply chain is everyone need to uh, realize what, what they are good at and then continue to extend on that. I mean, for us, I mean, we have the scale advantage, but I don't think using the scale advantage itself will bring too much value out of it. But for us, we want to use our scale advantage to continue to invest into uh, the uh, supply chain of ourselves and also uh, upgrade and modification of the uh, uh, production process. Instead of running higher in, in, in terms of capacity, I think the key will be how we improve the production process to make um, much uh, uh, more efficient uh, production line and generate more profit out of it instead of continue to run it up on scale. Okay, all right, thank you. All right, my next question is to Jeff. Um, so how are you, it's the same question. So how are you uh, facing the current competition because of oversupply? Um, what is your research and development process enhancement and what about new molecules? Cool, yeah, I totally agree with Kevin. The oversupply issue is just something that we have to accept as the reality, right? And um, from Max Unitech's standpoint, we're really approaching it on two fronts. One, we have to look internally and find more efficiencies within our own organization. And two, on the R&D front, we have to continue investing in R&D, which is, I guess, a difficult decision in the current climate, but from our perspective, that's where we really add value and we're able to capture more value um, for not only ourselves, but also our partners. And really um, to have those more, uh, I guess, products that have IP protection where we're able to capture more value, that's essential to our strategy and our growth. Great, I know that um, David has written about new strategies for uh, companies facing oversupply, and a lot of it had to do with new molecules and research. Um, but David, maybe you could talk a little bit about uh, why does overcapacity happen, and what will be the future landscape? Well, it's a very tough question for anyone, anyone to predict the future of the China agrochemical industry. But basically, we, if we talk about the oversupply, we need to think about the, why uh, such kind of overcapacity happens. And that's because of the, when China get into the uh, WTO, we set over capacity for global demand, you know, not only for domestic uh, supply. So um, I think it's uh, during the COVID-19, there's a, a bull YB effect happens from global supply chain, especially for multinational companies. At the beginning of the 2020, uh, multinationals want to uh, push up 
about their uh, their sales into the distribution. Uh, so they are they also use the tools to uh, compete with uh, each other. So I think the uh, the bull eye effect uh, affect the, the investment from uh, upstream very much. So that's the key reasons. For future landscape, I think the uh, the China agrochemical supply, uh, some suppliers with the resources, advantages, and scale effect, and can have the long-term strategies with uh, long-term cooperation with the global distributors that I think they will survive. All right, thank you. Um, so we're gonna kind of switch to the future strategies, which we're kind of heading on. Jeff, um, so Jeff, this is for you. Is your focus on the PPO herbicides or are you expanding more with different categories? And what's the core value of your um, business in US and LATAM distributors? Right, so PPO herbicides, such as um, flumioxazin uh, and sulfentrazone and carfentrazone are a huge part of Max Unitech's portfolio. Um, especially with you know increasing glyphosate resistance, um, it is a part where we have seen a lot of demand from our partners, not only here in North America but also in South Af uh, South America as well. And um, definitely, it is part of our overall strategy to expand. And we do think this is one area, uh, the PPO herbicides, where there's a lot of room for growth and. We've seen, uh, particularly this year, like for example in Canada, a lot more market adoption where um, they've used PPO herbicides in, to replace some more other uh, products. Great, thank you. Um, so Kevin, this is a question for you. Um, what's your opinion on the glyphosate prices in the coming year? Um, and I'll have a couple of follow-up questions for you after that, so let's start with that one. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, as David mentioned, I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't need to be sitting here. Right? But, but uh, to me, um, I think in general, the market after the previous couple of years, we see a very volatile market. I mean, not only on glyphosate, but on the whole industry. And getting into 2023, 2024, we are seeing the market getting more stable, less volatile. I think it will continue to be that pattern. Uh, well, uh, I think it will be really helpful and relatively healthy for the whole industry because it makes uh, people are relatively predictable and easier to do their budget and planning, and which will help um, the whole industry and also the upstream manufacturers to, to arrange their production. So I think we will continue to see a less volatile market in, in the following half year to, to, to a year, and then uh, which will additional help the overall supply and, and demand situation. And at the same time, when we look into the cost perspective of uh, manufacturers, we are seeing some of the raw materials was uh, already going back to pre-COVID level. Some of them are not, but there are reasons behind some of those raw materials that cannot go back to pre-COVID level uh, because uh, there are increased demands of uh, other industry using the same uh, elements. And as well as, well, there are just more restriction on some of the element being used in to produce some of the active ingredient, is, uh, namely glyphosate. So I don't see too much of a room for uh, raw material to continue to drop to some of them to put COVID level. Given that, then I think with the current margin we are seeing from manufacturers as well as the channel, there's not that attractive for additional people to come into the industry, which make it relatively stable uh, uh, on top of what we are seeing nowadays. And it also help uh, everyone in the industry. And talking about if we are seeing upside for, for, for the uh, pricing of glyphosate or for industry, I think we'll continue to go, go back to maybe pre-COVID level. We will see seasonality around the year when there are some months demand will increase, then we'll push the price going up a little bit, but not a huge increase. At the same time, we will never forget, well, what happened? There will be always accident or, or black swan event in the world, then that might trigger uh, another round of price increasing. But to me, I don't see too much of a room for, for price continue to decrease from, from production and cost perspective. But if we are predicting whether it will increase, I think seasonality will be an impact. But another thing we will never forget is, well, supply chain. There are always challenges in, in supply chain. That's the truth. Um, well, what about your company? Uh, what do you expect its value as a key glyphosate supplier from China? 
I mean, for, for ourselves, continue to grow. I, I think, as I mentioned previously, we will continue to do what we are good at. I, I mean, we believe that in the whole uh, supply chain and whole industry system, there will always specialization. We, if we do what we are good at, then we will have a better growth. And we will need to find a correct partner that go along the path as well. And for ourselves, um, uh, other than, I mean, do what we are good, in, good at, uh, uh, another topic that has been talking about quite often is decarbonization, because I think that will be an important topic in the following few years. And for us, we believe if we are going uh, ahead of the market, or at least as a company itself trying to help the industry to go decarbonization, that, that, that will help. So uh, we continue to focus on that a lot in the last 12 to 18 months, and not only on uh, carb carbon footprints, but also trying to look into uh, how we can work with our supply chains to reduce the total carbon consumption, and which might lead to uh, less uh, uh, emissions or, or uh, uh, less emissions and, and waste generated. So I think that's one point that we, we will continue to look into. Another point is, well, we always talk about in the industry, you need to find something that can generate additional value. So that's uh, one reason we look into a higher concentration glyphosate and sodium-free product that we recently look into. So those two paths will be uh, important directions for Fuhua in general to look into. Well, on top of that, we might consider uh, what, 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 additional portfolio, uh, what, what additional product we can put in, into the portfolio. But as I mentioned, we will continue to need to do what we are good at to, to survive in, in this environment. All right, great, thank you. Okay, David, this question is for you. Um, so what do you see the Chinese supplier strategies changing during this um, tough time? Um, well, I think the most important thing for Chinese suppliers is to change management, uh, management inside of their companies. And currently we are seeing that uh, some people uh, want to have diversify of their business and to in, uh, invest on new energy track or someone want to have the uh, optimization of their internal decision makings. Uh, someone could choose the right way, but someone could choose the wrong way. So everything can be happened. Uh, but the, like, for example, the diversify uh, is very difficult for anyone uh, to get into new track to be successful if you without, uh, have no resources around it, uh, advantages. And, in, and someone want to give them more power to their plant in, uh, so they can separate their ri risk about management. But it's a, it will cause a lack of the innovation or need some process uh, in future. So uh, currently we think that uh, during the tough time of the Chinese suppliers, um, someone will lose their opportunities and someone will rise up. As I mentioned that to some very uh, awesome suppliers uh, will rise up very quickly during this time. All right, thank you. All right, so this final question is for all of you. So I'm going to start with you, Jeff, and then we'll just kind of go right down the line. So um, as distributors, how should uh, we view China's future supply for supply chain management? And what are the challenges and what are the opportunities? Yeah, so I think you know, right now it's a tough time for us on the supply side, but I think if you were a distributor, you know, obviously the, your three main factors have to be price, quality, and the level of service. You have to find the right mix of those that suit your needs the best. And I think Max Neotech as a company, we've never been the rock bottom price, but we've always aimed to add value in not only our product portfolio, but also the level of service and quality control we provide our customers. And I think that is something that, um, you know, if I were a distributor here in, in the U.S., I would be looking for. And um, from Max Tech's perspective, our, one, our goal is to have a sustainable business moving forward and to, you know, be here whether we're having a good day or a bad day, right? Um, and so I think there the opportunities for a distributor now, you can really see, um, I guess, how people, your partners operate, and you can really choose who you like to work with moving forward. And in terms of the challenges, um, I guess identifying who those people are, that's not the easiest thing to do. And um, hopefully you come to us, but best of luck 
either way, right? All right, thanks, Jeff. All right, Kevin, what's your answer? I think when we think about supply chain, um, many of the people here, either from, from, from the channel, from the industry, or from manufacturers, people typically think supply chain are more a question of the channel. But actually, for manufacturers, we also need to consider su supply chain. I mean, we need to guarantee, well, we have enough raw, raw material products. Uh, the shipment are not be able to delay. So I think uh, advantage of for ourselves with, with the scale that we have is we are able to do a lot of backward integration. At the same time, we will have our own logistic team, which uh, being able to lessen, well, when there are critical times or, or times that we are not able to source some of the material, we, are, we will be able to find backup. So I think um, as a company ourselves or, or many of the players in, in the industry, when we consider uh, supply chain, we always want to find a reliable partners. I think that's always the topic when we think about how, how to manage the supply chain. But as a Chinese company, um, uh, some ideas that I have, I mean, uh, that makes Chinese company or, or manufacturer continue to survive in, in, in this industry. I think uh, there are a couple of key points. I mean, one of them, we will never forget agrochemical is part of the chemical industry. So with the population base and the consumption of some other chemical products within the countries, which will help definitely the manufacturing of agrochemical in, in China. And secondly, over the last 20 years, I mean, as David mentioned, over after WTO, when, when China get a lot of opportunity to go overseas, um, the Chinese manufacturers continue, uh, along with the help of different industry, can in, continue to build up a relatively healthy uh, uh, logistic and all the utility supplies that can help Chinese manufacturers to be competitive. I think that has already been built up, uh, which make Chinese manufacturers continue to, to be competitive. And other things that I think will be key for, for Chinese manufacturer to, to survive, I mean, or to compete in the world is consider what um, elements or, or um, elements out of the active ingredients that we produce, maybe we get the raw material advantage based on the location we have. I mean, luckily we, we are one of them. Uh, so I think those are the key points that we see Chinese manufacturers can continue to compete in the global uh, uh, perspective. And I think the opportunity will come out well if the labor costs or all the costs continue to increase in China and also globally and in different area, then we, we need to con continue to consider well, how we go automation, go digital. And as I mentioned, well, decarbonization is another topic that eventually will, will come to the table for all the manufacturers. And if when, when company, when manufacturers start to make money, if you are willing to invest in those areas, you might not get the return nowadays, but uh, in the long run, you will be competitive. So I think those will be the opportunity that we are seeing uh, in, in nowadays supply chain. Okay, thank you. All right, David, it's your turn. Here you go. Uh, from my point of view, because of, uh, I connect with uh, many companies around the world, and I think the reconnection will be the first thing that we need to do to uh, how to connect the global de demand together with China supply chain. Uh, as I mentioned to one company ar around the world, it's, uh, I say that do not focus on the production cost, focus on the production efficiency about China supply. I think it's very important to think about what kind of a position of China supply will be. And the second thing is, uh, I think the change inside of the multinational companies and distributors also happened. So do not bring only your procurement teams in to Chinese suppliers. Bring your sales team, the marketing teams, to think about the whole competi competition strategy together with you Chinese suppliers. And then you can be very successful about your market. Um, I think inside of the uh, companies, when, you, when we see the, uh, the uh, supply chain management, we need very strong leadership inside of it. So some people inside of your supply chain have to lead whole teams of your company and to work together with strategies to instruct the whole team to have the new portfolios, new solutions, and to feed the new demand from your farmers. And the third thing is, in, I think, very important to do not focus on uh, only for the uh, old generation of Chinese agrochemical industry, focus on the young generations. I think the young generation currently, they have already show up, 
and uh, they will bring some new ideas in open mandate and globalization uh, point of view uh, together with distributors. So we can reshape the, about the market very, very well, and uh, I think China supply will support you very much. Um, before I ask my final question, and before we take questions from the audience, if you have any, um, you know, we were discussing yesterday, and you were talking about strong management leading with new portfolios, and we were talking about a big question that keeps coming up is adding biologicals, diversifying portfolios with biologicals. And I think you had said that maybe you didn't think that was a good idea, or what, what was your answer for that? Uh, you mean the diversi uh, diversify about this? Um, some people, uh, some companies inside of China are currently thinking about the synthetic chemicals could face some problem. So they choose the, the, uh, the new uh, business tracks. Uh, someone will choose the biologicals from their side. But from my point of view that uh, we need to think about the, uh, the person and the suppliers who really focus on what they are doing. Like Fuhua, like uh, uh, Max, they focus on their key portfolios and they can contri contribute a lot into that part and to have the cost of saving and the high efficiency of about the production. So to find out the diversify it is not good uh, could not be a good solution because you are not GE. You know, GE just licensed in some new technologies but they resell uh, to have the cash flow back, you know, when they sell their old business. So think about this way, that uh, if you do not have this kind of uh, ability, you need to focus on what you are really doing and think about that, uh, what kind of value we can create. Thank you, gentlemen, very much for your participation in this panel. Thank you. Thank you.